this all start for you? I mean, I know that you went to Duke, not known as possibly one of the great ad schools. <laughs> <laughs> so, Literally not having a single advertising program. So what was your major and how did this all evolve into a career in advertising, your starting point? Uh, well, my parents told me I needed to get dental insurance, and it's hard to find a creative career that gives you any kind of stability. So I started looking um, into advertising and marketing. I didn't know anything about it. There were no classes that were taught at Duke. And uh, so I thought I wanted to go into account services, and I kept saying, but where's the fun stuff? Where, where's the part about coming up with ideas? And finally, I found out there's this thing called the creative department, where you can uh, be a copywriter and have dental insurance. So your major was in journalism, or my major was in sociology, so, so. and I had um, I had three minors. But the the thing that I was always curious about in school, and still I'm curious about, is why are we influenced by certain things in our environment? What is it about psychology or about um, information and about messages that that makes us choose one thing over another. And to me, that's always been at the heart of what advertising is about. Uh, how do you create a message that isn't just entertainment, but is actually making somebody think differently? So your sociology background, obviously, would have been a great link, because a lot of my students will, um, who are at university level courses and taking um, sociology, find it a real easy gap into account services mm. um, through the research forums, etc. cetera. Uh, Creative ads, like what got you sort of like spark? Was there one ad at one point that you saw and you said, I want to be doing that? Or there is, okay. yeah. I went, I was, uh, I was interning at TBWA. This is before Shiat Day. So it was TBWA. They had just done the Absolute campaign. They had mm -hmm. just started that, the iconic bottle. And I really wanted a job there. And I was an intern. I was working for free, literally running and getting coffee. And I said to the creative director, Peter Lubellin, who, side note, his father created Lubellin. Yes, exactly. My, one of my heroes. Really? Absolutely. So Peter was one of mine. So I said to him, I'd like to continue on as a writer. You don't even really have to pay me that much. You know, I'll, I'll live anywhere. I'll do anything. I just want to learn from you. You know what he said? He said, I don't think you have what it takes to be a writer. So I went home, tail between my legs, thinking, I don't have what it takes to be a copywriter. And um, I went to the Portfolio Center. And I, I just hoped against hope that they would be able to teach me how to be a copywriter. And um, I didn't have a really successful career there. I wasn't by any means um, vastly awarded. At one point, there was a question of whether or not I was going to be able to graduate um, like <laughs> on an early track. Right. Um, I was, in a sense, held back. And, um, and I think that they, they, I don't think that I had this incredible um, gift for writing the way some of the people that I really admire in the business. Um, I think we, we all have different styles of writing. We all have different ways of solving advertising problems or, or, or creating innovative solutions. There's not a right way to do it. And sometimes you may find that you're in an environment in which you're not getting a lot of positive reinforcement. And the important thing to know is that doesn't mean you can't still be great. You just have to find your own track. Peter LeBellin really thought that I wasn't going to be a good copywriter. And, um, and I, maybe I wouldn't have been a good copywriter under him. Maybe I could never have come up with the, an absolute campaign. And that's fine. The great thing is there's so many different ways to be creative and so many different styles and ways to express your creativity. Right.